Hi everyone, welcome back to another video, and similar to my other videos, I'm going to be looking at how the Black Order does in PvE and PvP, so that includes World Boss Ultimate Thanos, World Boss Legend Null, Giant Boss Raid Galactus, Timeline, and Alliance Conquest. Along the way, I'm also going to be proposing some potential skill rotations and build options. I'm going to start off by testing the characters with just their uniforms first to get a baseline of how they do. Then after I've done that, I'm going to upgrade them, so transcending them and T3, so I can see how much better the characters get and how much of their clear time is attributed to the uniform or the upgrade. For testing purposes I've kept my card stats the same as last time so that's roughly around 100 total attack and 13% pierce. Besides that none of the characters have a CTP equipped or a custom gear so this is all done with no damage proc. Unfortunately, I had a lot of testing content for Timeline and Alliance Conquest, so I wasn't able to fit it into this video, although I do talk about some of the results that I got in this video. And you'll see that when I talk about some of the characters' build options. So if you're interested to see how the characters perform on the PvP side, then definitely check out the next video, but this one will be primarily focused on how they perform in PvE and how they get better with their upgrades. But yeah, there's a lot to cover, so let's just get straight into it. Oh, and before I start, this is what the uniform options look like. Most of them are not really that great, to be honest. They're kind of expensive or outdated. But yeah, anyways, uniform options aside, the first test that I did was with Corvus's new uniform, which turns him from a universal type into a speed type. Similar to my other videos, I test on Thanos to limit the all defense down mechanic and give you a better idea of the raw damage of the character. Besides that, I don't have a damage proc on any of these characters, so the testing should be pretty consistent throughout for all of them. As a little bit of a spoiler alert, all four uniforms end up being great buffs for the characters, so I decided to test on Thanos stage 50 with only Groot as a striker for the heals. Also as a quick note, I didn't test any of these characters either with no uniform or their old uniform because they couldn't complete any of the content as they were in their current state. Anyways, with this uniform, if you have a single skill damage proc, the rotation is really simple. You basically just do the fifth skill, and as soon as the spear touches the ground, so almost immediately you skill cancel into the fourth skill, and just let that play out. With that said, if you want to use this character for PvE, then a CTP of Energy is probably your best bet. You could probably also make use of a CTP of Rage, since there is a lot of time left over after you do the 5-4 where you can fill in with your other skills, or 3, 2, and 1. But those don't nearly do as much damage as the 5-4, so it's probably not as good. Corvus's burst damage with the 5-4 combo is actually really good, so I can see why some people might want to build him for PvE. But to be honest, this character was basically designed for PvP. And that's mostly because of how the Awakening and the Revive mechanic work together. As you're probably aware, when a character dies and they revive, they immediately go into their Awakening skill. Considering how strong the Awakening skill is, it usually one-shots any character that you face. With that in mind, you can't really go wrong with a CTP like Authority, which can give you damage accumulation and invincibility which can keep you alive long enough to use the Awakening skill at least once before you die and use it again. And as an added bonus, since Black Dwarf's newest uniform gives guard break immunity to the rest of the Black Order if you use them on the same team, you can also use something like a Transcendence or Patience if you will, and also have the guard break immunity on your character. If you're considering using a CTP of regeneration, I would probably opt against it because his base health is kind of low and it doesn't get much better with the Transcendence. As a result of this, the HP shield won't really provide that much survival compared to probably an invincible from the other CTPs. If you're wondering what option I went with and what I think is the most value, it's the CTP of Destruction. There's many reasons why I went with this choice. The first one is that you can use the character independently of Black Dwarf without worrying about the lack of guard break immunity. The second is that the character has no penetration whatsoever on the new uniform. So this means that if a character is invincible when Corvus uses his awakening skill, then there's a chance that a lot of that damage can not get through to kill the character. But if you're using CTP of Destruction, then that's not the case. And the last reason is because it's a great hybrid option. I can use the character in PvP and he'll function similarly well in PvE. Whether you want the character to be tankier with an invincible proc or have more burst potential with a damage proc, neither is a bad choice. Anyways, with a new uniform, you can see I finished with exactly two minutes remaining. With Proxima's newest uniform, she gets a support passive on it similar to Taskmaster's, 
which gives added damage versus heroes or villains, but only applies to villain characters on your team. Even though she has this support passive, she's also really good as a standalone character. Similarly to Corvus, if you wanted to use Proxima for PvE, then a CTP of energy is more than likely your best bet because she can stack a lot of skills on top of one another and they have a lot of chain hit damage. For the same reasons as Corvus, you could probably make use of a CTP of Rage as well, since after you've used your skills, you have a lot of filler skills that you can use. Granted, again, those skills don't do as much damage as your 5, 4, and 3, which are used if you're using a single damage proc. The rotation that I tested out that worked best for me is you use your 5th skill and you cancel that after she throws the spear to the ground, and you go into your third skill and you cancel that after the second set of spears appear. So after she does her kind of second shuffle and then you go into your fourth skill and you hold that down till it's fully charged and let it play out. After that, you can use your one skill and cancel it into your two skill and then go back into the rotation that I just mentioned. Oddly enough, even though this character doesn't have an iframe ignore like the newest uniform for Black Dwarf and Supergiant, and the character doesn't have an easily accessible ultimate skill like Corvus's Awakening. Based on the results of my testing, she seems to do better in PvP than PvE. It's a little bit of a spoiler alert, she seems to perform a little bit worse than the other characters in PvE content. And besides not having the tools that I just mentioned, she does have a lot of other stuff that makes her pretty good for PvP. She has penetration natively in her kit. She has a built-in invincible proc when she's under a certain health threshold. She has high base health as well as a skill that helps her recover that health back. On top of that, on auto, she frequently goes into iframe skills and moves around a lot, so she becomes really difficult to hit. If you're considering building her for PvP like I have, then I'm pretty sure that a regen CTP will be the most viable option. She already has penetration in her kit, so CTP of destruction is kind of redundant. And she also has invincible in her kit, so that makes CTP of authority, transcendence, and patience also kind of redundant. Granted that invincible proc only activates once, so you could go with those options, but because fights are kind of quick in Alliance Conquest at least, then you probably won't get much value out of them. Still, in a tough fight, transcendence or authority could easily work, and you'd also get that accumulation added to the character from the authority CTP. I mentioned that the regeneration CTP is probably the most viable and that's because it doesn't have overlapping effects like the other ones. In addition to that, the high base HP pool works well with the CTP and because she spams her fifth skill a lot, the recovery on the CTP will boost that healing even more. Because Proxima has invincible penetration and even guard break immunity if you team her up with Black Dwarf, you could literally use any CTP and even make CTP of Energy and CTP of Rage work for PvP. If you wanted, you could also boost her even more as a support by using a CTP of Insight and the base health would complement her high base HP too. Again, you can't really go wrong with any of these builds, it just depends what you want from the character and some builds might be a little bit more ideal for that aim that you have than others. So for Proxima, I finished with a minute and 11 seconds remaining, which is roughly around 50 seconds slower than Corvus's run. I was pleasantly surprised at how much better the uniforms made the last two characters that I'm testing, i.e. Black Dwarf and Supergiant. Both actually became really great at PvE and PvP. Black Dwarf's newest uniform made him into a combat type from a universal and also gave him an infinite skill, i.e. his third skill, if you keep it held down. The rotation that I tested that worked best for me and is likely ideal for a single skill damage proc is you use your fifth skill and then cancel that into your fourth skill and then you delay cancel that after he hits the ground and stay into your third skill. If you try to use a single damage proc like a CTP of energy for PvE, then you probably have to delay this rotation a little bit so that you can keep the proc on the third skill. So basically start off by proccing on a random skill and then do your fifth skill into your fourth skill. And by that time that the bad proc is over, your new proc will be ready to start on your third skill. And then you just keep rotating. So you'll keep landing on the third skill. The reason you want the fourth skill to play out is because you have all defense down when he lands and that's going to be useful for the majority of fights excluding world boss legend and most likely thanos but regardless the fourth skill also does a lot of damage so you kind of want to use that skill the fifth skill also does a lot of damage but unfortunately it's a really long animation so it more than likely is better to use five cancel into four and three 
and have all those damage buffs stack on the third skill that you can channel for as long as you want. I obviously haven't tested this character with a PvE build, but I'd suspect that a CTP of Rage might be easier to use because of all the hoops you kind of have to jump through to line up the proc on your third skill. In addition to that, a 5 second proc instead of single damage proc allows you to also let the 5th skill play out a little bit more before going into your other skills. On the PvP side, the uniform also becomes really great because it provides physical reflect now on top of the physical immunity lead that he previously had. And it also reduces reflect damage to Black Order characters and provides them guard break immunity if you team them up. On top of that, the character also gets HP increases throughout his skills, which makes him a tankier and a better counter option versus physical types like the defenders. To make the most out of his reflect damage and give him a higher chance of using his awakening skill, I'd recommend going with a CTP of Transcendence since he already has guard break immunity built in, or a better option I think would be going with a CTP of regeneration because he already has a really big health pool and his skills increase that health pool even more and if you transcend him that health pool becomes gigantic and all of that lends really well to the HP shield increasing his survivability. That said, you don't necessarily have to go with a CTP. You can also use a really good extreme obelisk such as one that has double HP and invincible or one that has max HP, recovery, and invincible. And you can see with the time that I finished on Thanos that even though Black Dwarf has these great PvP tools, I was able to finish 5 seconds faster than Corvus and a full minute faster than Proxima. And last but certainly not least is Supergiant, which I have to say from my testing seemed like she might be the best character from this update. And that's saying something considering that all three characters got a really great upgrade. I'm not sure if you can make a CTP of energy work for this character, she has a lot of skills that need to be stacked on one another, but might trigger the proc not on the skill that you might want. Because all of her skills deal element damage, it might be safer to go with something like a CTP of Judgment if you're going to build her for PvE. The rotation that I went with is to use the fourth skill and then cancel that into your fifth skill, and then sort of delay cancel that when the little aura appears into the second skill and then into the third skill and let the third skill play out. Like I said, this might be a little bit tough to do if you're using a single skill damage proc like an energy, but it should be a lot easier to deal with if you're using something like Judgment or Rage. An interesting thing to note is that Supergiant doesn't have a lot of range on her skills, so if you're going to use this rotation, it's best to be really close to the enemy since if they move just a bit, you might be out of range from using these skills. From my testing, the third skill had the most range, and if the enemy moves away, you oftentimes can't use your other skills and are left to only use your third skill, so just keep that in mind. Like Black Dwarf, Supergiant is also really good in PvP. She has good burst damage, she has a debuff leadership, which is really important for things like Alliance Conquest and Timeline, and she has an iframe ignore skill. On top of that, as you'll see in the timeline testing that I did, her third skill actually has guard break immunity penetration, similar to Jean's fifth skill, which can keep you permanently locked down. If that wasn't enough, the character also has invisibility in her kit, which makes it pretty tough for other enemies to kill her unless they also have an iframe ignore skill. To balance this out, the devs gave her really low base health, and keeping that in mind, I would probably recommend building her more for survival, since if she gets caught out of the invisibility, then she's more than likely to die. So some of the options that you can go with are a CTP of Transcendence or a CTP of Authority. Like Corvus, I wouldn't really recommend using a regen because the base health is so low that the HP shield won't really do much for you. I haven't really considered it because of her good burst damage but a CTP of Destruction might actually work really well for her too. She has no native penetration in her kit, and if you combine the damage proc with the penetration and the hard-hitting skills, it might be an insta-kill if she gets the hit first. If not, then the penetration is still really good for the awakening skill regardless. And you benefit by being able to use the character in PvE content as well. You can see that my time is about 40 seconds slower than Black Dwarf and Corvus, and about 10 seconds faster than Proxima. That's pretty good considering that she couldn't really do any content at all before and was pretty much used just for a debuff leadership in Alliance Conquest. With this finished time, you might be wondering why I said that she might be the best character, but she hasn't gotten her Awakened skill yet, and you'll see. Boy, will you see. Since I covered a lot of information, especially for builds, here's a quick infographic to sum up some of that. I'm not really going to cover the infographic because the video would just get too long, so if you want to see the infographic in full, then maybe just pause the video. 
I also tested the characters versus Proxima, Call, and Ma to see if they could do stage 99. And because I did so, I'll have that extra data and I can see how much better they get versus these bosses as well. For Corvus, his all defense down is located on his third skill. So you want to make sure to use that skill when you're facing bosses where all defense down is applicable. So as you can see, Corvus can do stage 99 of Proxima without any issue. With no damage proc and no strikers, he finished with about a minute and 30 seconds remaining. As I mentioned previously, Black Dwarf's all defense down is located on his fourth skill after he lands, so make sure you don't cancel before then. And similar to Corvus, I finished around the minute and 30 second mark. I ended up struggling with Proxima a little bit because she does have all defense down on her third skill, but unfortunately it doesn't ignore immunity, so it doesn't work in World Boss Ultimate. Regardless, I was still able to clear Call stage 99, but just barely. So Giant all defense down is located on our fourth skill and it's pretty good because it stacks up pretty quickly going up by 15% every time up to 50%. You can see the significance of the all defense down since I finished almost two minutes faster than Proxima with the all defense down on Supergiant and roughly around 10 to 15 seconds faster than Corvus and Black Dwarf in their respective bosses. Another interesting thing is that Supergiant has a 5 second mind control on her third skill, which makes her particularly good for enemies like Ebony Ma who move around a lot and iframe frequently. Normally Ma wastes a lot of your time by jumping around and avoiding your attacks, but because the skill cooldown on the third is so low and the duration for the mind control is so high, you can basically keep him permanently locked down. So you can see from the combination of the lockdown, the all defense down, and the mental damage having an edge on this stage, that I was able to complete this about almost a minute quicker than the Call Obsidian stage before. Before I upgraded each of the characters, I decided to take them into Giant Boss Raid Galactus, so I could see what the raw damage would look like with less interruptions from the boss. Big thanks to Secret and Wicked for helping me test. Without them, I wouldn't have been able to see how each of these characters perform solo versus Galactus. For Corvus, I was able to solo in about 2 minutes and 30 seconds. Proxima was a little bit slower at 3 minutes since her charge up skill proved a little bit troublesome to land. You'd think that Black Dwarf would be faster than Proxima, but it was kind of hard to use his third skill with all the environmental effects going on. And since most of his damage is attributed to staying in the third skill, then you can see the problem there. Still, I was only about 15 seconds behind Proxima on the clear time. Unsurprisingly, with the all defense down and the lockdown not having any effect versus Galactus, Supergiant finished just 20 seconds slower than Black Dwarf. With all the base testing out of the way, I can finally upgrade all of the characters. If you're looking to do the same, then to awaken any of the Black Order, it costs 525 Awakening Crystals, as well as 1,500 Mandalay Gem Fragments. If you're looking to go further and transform send each character, it's going to cost you another 525 Awakening Crystals to get the Awakening skill to max level. And then once you've done that, an additional 150 Awakening Crystals as well as 300 Mandalay Gem Fragments to complete the Transcendence. So in total, for one character, in terms of the Awakening Materials, it'll cost you 1200 Awakening Crystals and 1,800 Mandalay Gem Fragments. That means that if you're looking to transcend all three of these characters, then it's going to cost you 3,600 Awakening Crystals and a whopping 5,400 Mandalay Gem Fragments. I don't expect anyone to transcend all of these characters together like I have, but that's why I'm making this video, to give you a better idea of how they perform, and let you come to the conclusion of which character you might want to prioritize over the others. I'll obviously also contribute my input, in case you're having a hard time deciding who to get first, and who to leave for last. In terms of who gets the biggest stat increase with their transcendence, that would go to Black Dwarf. With his upgrade, he gets roughly around 11,000 physical attack damage increase, and almost 30,000 HP increase. If you're weighing the transcendence just on stat increase alone, then Black Dwarf is more than likely your best bet for those materials. If you're looking at just the awakening skill, then it becomes a little bit trickier, but that's why I did the testing. With all the upgrades out of the way now, I can look at how much the character improves versus Thanos and the other content that I tested. With the awakening skill unlocked for Corvus now, he gains accumulated damage for the damage that he's dealing. This means with the Awakening skill unlocked, you want to start off your rotation with the 6th skill for Corvus, 
and you want to delay cancel that after the blue aura on the ground appears. Then you would directly go into your 5 cancel 4 combo. With this upgrade, I was able to finish Thanos about 50 seconds quicker than before. Similarly, Proxima also gains accumulated damage dealt on her ultimate skill. And for Proxima, I wasn't too far off from Corvus, finishing 40 seconds faster. If you want to make the most out of a single damage proc, the rotation that I found works best is to start off with your fourth skill and you hold it down for about a second or a second and a half. So it'll start glowing and then you hold it down till it starts glowing more intensely. At that point, the damage increase or the buff from the fourth skill is active you don't actually have to let the skill play through and by doing this you have that fully charged buff active on your character before you go into your full rotation so that means you start off with the fourth skill and hold it till it glows once and then glows more intensely and then you immediately cancel that into the fifth skill when she jumps up and then you cancel that into the third skill after she does her second shuffle and then you go into your ult. If you're using something like a rage proc and not a single skill damage proc and you want to know when you can cancel the ultimate skill, you have to wait till after she starts spinning her spear and then the moment she jumps up is when you can cancel it and still get the full damage from the ultimate. However, if you're using a single skill damage proc, then you obviously don't want to cancel the ultimate. For Black Dwarf's rotation, after you've awakened him, you want to do your fifth skill and then cancel that into your sixth skill and similar to Corvus you want to wait till the blue aura appears on the ground first and then you cancel that into your fourth skill till he lands on the ground and then stay in your third skill. Like I mentioned previously if you try to open with this rotation and you have a single skill damage proc you're likely going to miss and just proc on a random skill so you either have to offset and start off with a bad skill so you can time the proc on the skills that you want or you might opt for something like a rage and it might be easier to use the skills and proc on everything but yeah regardless of what you go with you definitely want to start with the fifth skill because that gives you the accumulated damage for damage dealt anyways for black dwarf with the upgrade i was able to finish thanos 35 seconds faster than before for a super giant the rotation that you want to go with is you go into your fourth skill and then cancel that into your fifth skill as soon as the little blue circle on the ground appears you cancel into the sixth skill and again similar to black dwarf and corvus after the big blue aura on the ground appears you would cancel that into your third skill like black dwarf if you're using a single skill damage proc then you have to offset to fit all of this in and proc on the skill that you want and since it can be a little bit tricky to fit all of that in with the damage proc coming up after you do your kind of bad skill rotation i didn't include the second skill but if you do want to include it you would do your four cancel five cancel two and then go into your sixth skill and then you delay cancel that into the third skill. If you're using a judgment CTP or even a rage, then you don't have to worry about the timing at all and it's probably a lot easier to do her skill rotations. I mentioned earlier that Supergiant's Awakening added a lot to her improvement and now you can see exactly what I meant by that. With the Awakening skill, Supergiant gets damage accumulation for damage dealt and the percentage is as high as 1%. Usually this is around 0 0.3, 0 0.4, maybe 0 0.6, but she got the full treatment. With that in mind, I previously completed Thanos with a minute and 23 seconds remaining, and with these upgrades, she completed it a full minute and 20 seconds faster. As some would say, she went from 0 to 100 real quick. Looking at the results of the other bosses, the clear time should have decreased more drastically since all of the awakening skills have all defense down and all of the characters now have accumulation. This also includes Proxima's ultimate skill which not only gives her the accumulation but up to 70% all defense down that does ignore immunity. With Corvus's upgrade, I finished about a minute and 35 seconds faster this time around. For Black Dwarf, this was a minute and 11 seconds faster. And coincidentally, for Proxima, it was also a minute and 11 seconds faster. Versus Call Obsidian, Supergiant cleared him a minute and 35 seconds faster this time. Whereas for Ebony Ma, she cleared him a minute and 5 seconds faster. On the giant boss raid front, Corvus got an improvement of about a minute and 10 seconds. Proxima only got an improvement of about 30 seconds. Black Dwarf shaved off about a minute and 40 seconds. And Supergiant took off the most at almost two full minutes. 
I also took the characters into stage 9 of Null to see if they could do it and how they would compare it with one another. As a bit of a side note, Corvus would probably be really good versus Mephisto since his skill rotation is very quick and he can avoid all the damage and movement associated with that stage. Not to mention the obvious fact that he becomes a speed type and gets the type advantage versus Mephisto. But yeah, with Corvus, I finished with a minute and 10 seconds remaining. For Proxima, I literally finished with zero seconds left. And I'm not sure that she's actually that much worse than the other characters, but because she has to stay in her fourth skill to charge it up and deal the damage, then it's kind of difficult to do that when Null is casting his abilities and you kind of have to dodge it, especially on the higher levels where it does a lot of damage. Regardless, I do think that the other characters are probably better than her in the PvE department at the very least. My fastest clear time was with Black Dwarf, which was 8 seconds faster than Corvus at a minute and 18 seconds remaining. One of the reasons why he was faster is because unlike Proxima, which I can't necessarily hold down and stay in the fourth skill, I can stay in the third skill since I can move around and avoid the damage. Based on the previous results, I would have thought that Supergiant would have had the best performance, but then I realized that Null also has resistance to element damage and Supergiant deals all mental damage. So with that said, I finished about 20 to 30 seconds slower than Corvus and Black Dwarf. After I finished all my testing, I geared out all my characters and since I had a damage proc for Corvus, I was curious to see how much better he would do with the CTP of Destruction on his run. So if you're wondering how much better he gets with a single skill damage proc, he basically cleared it about a minute and 20 seconds faster than before. So this video ended up being pretty long and I did cover a lot of information, so I made an infograph at the end here to sum it all up. So based on my testing, the character that got the biggest upgrade with their awakening skill was Supergiant. As you can see from the graphics, Supergiant had almost double as high of an improvement versus Thanos, and almost had the highest improvement versus other bosses like Kull, even though Corvus was only slightly ahead of Supergiant in terms of the improvement in this category. And versus Galactus, she had almost a two minute improvement, which is insane. Even with Supergiant doing so well, the other characters didn't have that much worse of an upgrade. As I just mentioned, Corvus actually had the best improvement versus other bosses, and Black Dwarf wasn't really that far behind Supergiant. He only had a difference of about 10 to 20 seconds between the other bosses and the Galactus fight. Unfortunately, Proxima kind of got the short end of the stick here. Her T3 didn't add as much as I thought or hoped it would have, and I think that's partially due to the fact that the all defense down and the accumulation is on the T3 skill, so she doesn't have it applicable as frequently as the other characters. Besides that, most of her skills are kind of delayed, so you have to cast them all and then do the charge up skill, and then if the boss does anything to interrupt that, a lot of that damage is kind of gone. So this is another reason why I mentioned that this character might be a little bit better for PvP than PvE actually. And you'll be able to see that in my next video. Anyways, if you want my opinion on who to awaken first, I would probably go with Corvus since he also has that damage accumulation like Supergiant, and he gets a sizable buff in PvE, and because of the awakening and the revive mechanic, he becomes top notch for PvP like Alliance Conquest. You're almost always guaranteed a character wipe in Timeline or a full team wipe in Alliance Conquest. It's kind of difficult for me to recommend Corvus first since Supergiant got the most increase from the awakening, but Corvus got the most value from the awakening. So if you're able to awaken two characters, then Supergiant is easily the second choice and borderline equivalent to Corvus. It just depends what you're kind of looking for. As for going further and transcending a character, I would easily give that to Black Dwarf since he has huge stat increases when doing so. If you're wondering what uniforms to get first, Supergiant is easily the top pick because she becomes a fully usable character. After that, I would go with Black Dwarf because he gets so many added benefits with his newest uniform. He gets passives that apply to the entire Black Order, such as the Guard Break Immunity and Reflect Reduction. His uniform gives himself physical reflect, which is essential for countering characters or teams like the defenders. He gets an iframe ignore skill, and he also becomes a fully functional character. After that, it becomes a little bit tricky. If you're trying to push world boss ultimate or world boss legend levels, then going with Proxima's newest uniform that gives a support to all villains 
is a good choice. However, if you want a new really good PvE character, then you can go with Corvus's new uniform. I specifically said PvE because I did some testing and the new uniform might not be as good as the old one for PvP. But again, you'll see that in the next video. Anyways, the video has gone on way too long, so if you've made it this far, thank you for watching. This video took a lot of effort to make, so if you did enjoy it, then maybe consider liking and subscribing, it really helped me out. And if you liked it a lot, you can consider even sharing it with other people. But yeah, I'm not going to tell you what to do. Subscribe. If you have any questions or any other comments, then you can also leave that in the comments and I'll try to answer it as soon as I can. As always, thank you for your time, but the video is now over.